Call the meeting of the Standing Committee on Finance to order for Monday evening, November 16th, 2015. It's a little after 7, I think it's about 7.06 uh, p.m. Evening to uh, all of your counselors and evening to everyone that, that is here. Before we uh, begin, I think it's only appropriate. I'm going to ask everybody to um, stand and join with me as we sort of pay <coughs> memorial to the situation that has transpired in another part of um, or, or in another section of, of the country, and that's with what's happening in Paris, France, and um, let's all think of those um, situations that, that occurred over this past few days and what those poor people are going through, and it just um, leads us to always believe that um, no one day is the same in our lives uh, lately, and we have to be cordial of that and, and always think of our surroundings, and um, just it's, uh, it, it's not good. It's not good, and I think we, uh, we need to pay them uh, some tribute. So take a moment of uh, silence for all those that uh, were lost uh, their lives over these last few days as well. Thank you for that. Uh, Councilors and, and guests as well. Council Moynihan. Mr. Deputy uh, Chairman, th yes. Uh, now something a little brighter note. Um, we have uh, James Edgar's great great grandson here, uh, John Marion, and he'd like to uh, <laughs> come up and speak about the uh, the uh, holiday parade on the uh, 28th. And uh, nobody, nobody has a objects. problem with that, right, Council? So we'll let Mr. Marion do his uh, usual. Uh, Introduction into uh, this year's uh, holiday festivities. Ah, We've got to put our hats on. Sorry, councils, I don't have your hats this year. We're a little bit behind schedule, but uh, okay. Council President, uh, members of the City Council, thanks for having me up here today. Um, I'm here to my annual report to tell you everything in USA Christmas Town is alive and well. We're doing, we're doing excellent. But, um, and you have some um, literature in front of you about the weekend that we have prepared. <clears throat> but first, what I'd like to do is I'd like to sincerely thank um, the Mayor, Bill Carpenter, I'd like to thank the school department, and I'd like to thank you as the City Council of the City, the entire city. We're all working together to make this uh, a wonderful event every year for the citizens that are here, and we couldn't do it um, if we didn't have a team effort from the top down. So I really sincerely, from the committee on, want to thank you for all the resources that you're putting in. This year we're stepping it up a little bit. The Mayor had asked for some decorations. For downtown, we haven't had any since 1957, of which I wasn't even born. So um, we want to thank you for that. And I think with the $180 million worth of investment going on downtown to showcase it at Christmas time will certainly be wonderful. And I think you're going to see uh, a great, great uh, visual when this happens. So thank you from, from everybody that's involved. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. So um, we have three days of events this year. Okay, and I'll be very brief because you have a, a busy schedule. It's Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, Friday night's a night with James Edgar. It's the 125th anniversary of Edgar becoming America's first department store Santa, and I am his nephew f saying that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> we, <laughs> so uh, it will be at the War Memorial. It's invitation only, and it is uh, for kindergarten children, and it's going to be a magical evening. You have your invitations there. Hopefully, you'll come. Sit in the balcony and enjoy. We're not going to tell you too much about it. Saturday, Santa Hat Day, Santa Hat Challenge, and the parade. So go on your Facebooks because you're going to be getting a message from me. Your challenge. It is the challenge to join the Santa Hat Challenge. Put on your Santa Hat. Take a selfie. Post it on your Facebook. We're going to raise money for the Jimmy Fund. You can go to SantaHatChallenge.com to do that. Okay, and then... Invite and challenge everybody to come down on November 28th to be a part of the biggest, largest gathering of Santa Hats on the planet. We're going to have tens of thousands down there. Parade begins at 1, Santa Hat Challenge at 12 noon. Sunday is going to be family day, free pictures with Santa Claus, a treasure hunt, and that's going to be wonderful just for the children and the family. So we've stepped it up on this 125th birthday. We want it to be national news, but we need you to get on your Facebooks and join the challenge. So thank you very much. Thank you again for your support. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. Have a great evening, and we'll see you in two weeks, and happy Thanksgiving first. Thank you, John. Thank As you. As always, we, we appreciate that uh, update. And just my uh, only question to you is uh, the decorations will be up in time for, for everything. I'm, I'm assuming that everything is on order as we... 
Thanks to, and I didn't mention this, and he's going to kill me, but there's another tree outside, thanks to Larry Riley and the DPW. Exactly. Okay, they're working endlessly around the clock. We'll be there, but Larry was the impetus behind this at the beginning because he says we've got to get rid of those wreaths and we've got to put some new decorations up. Great. So we want to thank Larry and the DPW. Yes, they will be. That's right. Great. Thank you. And, and I also want to just take a moment to thank our DPW commissioner for also doing one thing that I think was most important. The fencing is down off the sidewalks for safety reasons, and we've got those removed so the sidewalks are clear for the parade. And, and uh, I think that's most important, and, and he worked on that. So He absolutely um, did. We told him there was going to be about a million two down there, so he got right on taking absolutely. those fences down. That was excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, Thank you, John. Uh, can Shana? I ask a question? Just, yep. uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Marion, sir. If people want to volunteer, if they want to help or want to do something on the weekend of events, um, where should they go? Is there some place they should... USACHristmastown.org. USA There's a separate Christmas spot there for volunteers, and uh, they can just sign up online, and they can volunteer either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, but there's different categories. Thank you very much for asking that. Okay. So USA USACHristmastown.org. Yes, and we do need volunteers because we have over 80 organizations that signed up this year. As of yesterday, it's the largest in over 10 years. So I think everybody's feeling the spirit and feeling your love for supporting us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you again, John. Any other questions? Thank you. We look forward to the event as usual. Thank you. I'll have your hats. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Just on some other um, housekeeping <coughs> matters, I, I do want to uh, mention that uh, Councillor Stewart uh, contacted me early this afternoon and said that he was going to try to be here, but he was uh, attending a meeting at work. Councillor DiNapoli also contacted me and uh, indicated that he wasn't feeling up to pass, so he wanted to make sure that we knew why he wasn't here this evening. I also want to um, make mention of uh, two of our councillors elect that are in the audience, and uh, councillor elect from Ward 5, Ann Beauregard, is here this evening, and also a new, uh, a new member, too, councillor at large elect, uh, former Mayor Winthrop Farrell, is here uh, in the audience as well. So we thank them both for being here. And they're here on the, on the appropriate night because this is the night when we do our work. So uh, I think they both understand that piece. And, and to you, councillors, I, I re, I'd be remiss. I didn't mention at the last meeting to congratulate all of, all of us that were reelected and that are going to be back here as well, serving with some of the new members, and also to, to Mayor Carpenter, who was also reelected for, for the next two years. So I think it's only appropriate. <laughs> And we can clap for Council Dubois, who's leaving, and, and she's going to stay as the our cry. state representative. I want y'all to cry. Uh, no, that's I'm right. Just kidding. Congratulations so. to you as you yeah. work even harder, as, as I always say, bringing home the bacon here to the city of Brockton. So good luck to you in the next year as well. Uh, with that being said, I believe we can start with order number one, uh, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of $553,978 from the unappropriated estimated receipts of fiscal year 2016 tax levy new growth to various departments. This appropriation is needed in order to provide funding for the labor costs to be incurred in fiscal year 16 for the two proposed collective bargaining agreements between the city and the Brockton City Employees Union invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, and Maureen Cruz, Personnel Director. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Good evening, Councillors. Uh, a few weeks ago, you approved uh, funding for a couple of contracts with other unions under this uh, 1162 umbrella. Uh, this is a new contract as well. This one's a little bit different. It comes from the same funding source. I'll deal with that first. The city had an estimate when we did the budget that you approved of about $800,000 in new uh, growth from the tax levy, not two and a half increase, but actual new investment in the city. We had a year where we generated over $2.9 million in new growth for the city. Um, it's the largest year we've ever had by far. It even exceeds the year when um, uh, the, uh, the Good Sam Samaritan Hospital was purchased by Stewart Healthcare and came on the tax rolls as a private industry. That was $2.2 million, I think, that year. So this by far is the largest year of tax levy new growth we've ever had, over $2.9 million. That's good news. It helps to fund city services and helps to fund our obligations. And I'd love to see it continue uh, in years to come. Uh, and it came from a variety of sources. It came from uh, residential investment. It came from industrial uh, investment, personal property, and commercial. So all segments of the tax base provided that. So these appropriations, <clears throat> there are several of them, but the first is they're all kind of the same. The, um, 
the appropriation is coming from that estimate that exceeded our budget estimate. In this case, it's $550,000. This particular contract is a little bit different from the ones you approved before because it's really two collective bargaining agreements. It's one for fiscals 13, uh, 14, and uh, 15. No, 14, 15, and 16. I'm sorry, I've got to make sure I've got that right. And uh, they haven't had an agreement since fiscal 13. Those first three years are at the same pattern as the one that you funded before, 2%, 2%, and 1.25% with two 1% bonuses for the years where they didn't have any retro. In addition to that, there's an extra half percent, uh, which is an exchange for these union members agreeing to several of the objectives the city was seeking. One was the ability to install GPS in the city-owned vehicles to track their driving. One was the ability to install a uh, telephone recording line in the offices uh, that we uh, thought it was needed on the city phones. And the third was for the uh, unions who were affected uh, to agree to extended hours on Monday night. Uh, the uh, Monday night hours would be at compensation uh, comp time, not through overtime hours. But those are, the, those are the objectives we achieved in the first contract. The two deals are linked. If the first contract, which is the only one that has funding in it because it's the, the other costs are for years to come, budget years to come. But if the contract for this first group isn't approved, the second contract doesn't become effective and we basically go back to the table. So we're asking for your approval on this contract, which as I said is a 222 with a one and a quarter and a 0 0.5. And then the second contract, if it becomes effective, is on a similar pattern. It's a two and a two and in the third year a 1.75. So you'll get yourself settled for three years where we've done nothing for them and three years into the future with this contract at less than 12 percent over the entire six-year period. I think it's a pretty fair settlement for uh, people who are working hard for the city. This particular group includes the animal control officers, uh, telephone dispatchers, emergency dispatchers down the police station, a variety of city hall positions as well. So it's a, it's a deal I would ask your approval of. Well overdue. To be truthful with you. Any questions? Have a recommendation Second. back to the full council. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to go back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council for favorable recommendation. Thank you, councilors. That's, that's, that's a good vote. I appreciate that. Madam Clerk. <coughs> Order appropriation of $108,355 from the unappropriated estimated receipts of fiscal year 2016 tax levy new growth to various departments in order to provide funding for the labor cost, including retroactive costs of a collective bargaining agreement between the city and its department heads union employees local 888 unit of SEIU and for the three year period of July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2016. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, and Maureen Cruz, Personnel Director. Okay, on this particular contract, it's a little bit different because this union uh, did not ask, was not interested at the moment in having a uh, second three-year agreement attached to this first three-year agreement. We'll be back at the table with them. Uh, that's okay. Uh, this union is, um, uh, there are several uh, departments where the officers used to be in the ordinances and maybe 10 years or so ago we had to uh, agree to a union for them. It includes the health officer, the procurement officer, the director of veterans affairs, uh, the, uh, some of the superintendents in DPW, not this commissioner, but some of the superintendents. Uh, in any case, this particular contract is only for a settlement of 2%, 2%, and 1 and a quarter percent because we weren't seeking any kind of changes in their working conditions, so they didn't get that extra half percent, and they also got the two 1% bonuses, and the cost is coming out of the tax levy growth that I was describing before. I ask your approval. Make a favorable recommendation back full council. <coughs> so again. On, on the, uh, on the on motion. The motion. Uh, council Rodriguez. I just, uh, uh, Jay, I just have a quick question for you. Our Department heads in other, if you know this, uh, are department heads in other cities on a un, in a union as well? Uh, the, the, the state law provides that there are only a few department uh, positions which can be exempted from the control of the union. My position is one, the city auditor's position is one, law office people and um, the uh, uh, city auditor. When this union was formed, we negotiated with it to get them to agree to excluding a couple of other positions, which in other communities are in the union. Uh, one would be the building superintendent. Um, I think um, planning could, would normally be in the uh, department head union, but we got that excluded at the bargaining table. So in many communities, I don't know if it's all, but in, many, in all communities, they have the right, 
in many communities, they've achieved that right uh, to, to become recognized as unions. But I'm saying, like, for instance, uh, cities of our equal size or around the same size as Brockton, are those cities department heads and unions as well? I, I hesitate to answer without looking that up, Councillor. I haven't looked at that in a while. I think the answer is probably yes, but be, I'd hesitate to give you an actual answer until I can check on it. I can get that to you by Monday night, but I think the answer is yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Any other, any other questions? <coughs> Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full Point session. Point of information I'm sorry, on that, Councilor just Kluge. so people know <coughs> when I vote, the personnel director is also exempted from the, from That's the right. department head That's union. Right. That's right. Thank you for that information, Councilor. Um, motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Councilor. Martin. Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of $416,816 from the unappropriated estimated receipts of fiscal year 2016 tax levy new growth to various departments. This appropriation is needed in order to provide funding for the labor costs to be incurred in fiscal year 16 for the two proposed collective bargaining agreements between the City and the Brockton City Hall Administrative Services Association. This first is for the period of July 1, 2013 through June 30, 2016. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, and Maureen Cruz, Personnel Director. Okay. Uh, Councilors, this union is for the clerks in the various offices of the city who, uh, who serve, our, uh, serve our citizens and the departments, in the registrar's office, in, in my office, auditor's office, virtually throughout the city. Uh, the secretaries and clerks of the city are in this union. And this is a two contract agreement like the first one I described to you. Uh, same basic pattern, a 2%, a 2%. And a one and a quarter percent in the third year with an additional half percent because they've agreed to the Monday hours and to the uh, recorded calls. And then in the second contract, it's a two percent, two percent, one point seven five percent. And there are some modest increases to a couple of their incentives. These are the lower paid employees in the city. We're trying to get them some fair compensation. Make a favorable recommendation back to full council. Second. Second. Motion has been made and second to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council with a favorable uh, recommendation. Again, thank you, councillors. Uh, and thank you, uh, Mr. Condon, as well. Item, Madam Clerk. Order that the sum of $2.8 million is appropriated to pay costs of various energy conservation improvements to the city buildings, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, such improvements to be made in accordance with an energy services agreement between the city and Amoresco Incorporated. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, James Casiri, Superintendent of Public Property, George Secarellis, PE President and Chief <coughs> of Staff of Amoresco, Michael Denault, Vice President of Amoresco, and Harold Mayer, Manager of Amoresco. Well, Councilors, I'll, I'll begin on this. Harold Mayer is, is, is able to explain some of the details on it, but basically the history on this is that uh, it goes back quite a ways. Uh, the state law uh, was, uh, was adopted which allows uh, Massachusetts municipalities to enter into these procurements for energy savings uh, contracts where the savings from electric bills and uh, energy bills are used to offset the cost of financing the, uh, the acquisition of the equipment that enables that savings. We procured this under that statute. Uh, there were actually two requests for proposal. Uh, one was for the school system and that, uh, that proposal didn't go forward. Uh, the school basically took the proposal and implemented the ideas through its own budget, not, uh, not through this uh, approach. Uh, but we did have a, a parallel proposal for the city buildings and this would finance virtually uh, energy saving equipment in virtually every city owned building, not the school buildings. Uh, the appropriation is for 2.8 million. It's a rounding up of a little bit more than what we think we might need. We can do it either by borrowing according to the order by, or by a municipal uh, financing lease, uh, depending upon which looks like more, more advantageous for the city. And at the end of the day, we're saving about a qu after you take into account the cost of the uh, lease or borrowing, we're saving about a quarter of a million dollars every year in energy cost. And over the life of the agreement, the net cost savings to the city is about a million and a half dollars. That's our net cost savings. And uh, as I said, it's, it's a variety of things. It's insulation, it's energy efficient lighting, it's um, uh, some more efficient uh, machinery. It's, I think it might be a boiler or two. There are no roofs. We tried to get our fire station roofs taken care of in this and the state law wouldn't allow us to do it. And uh, there is a, a representative for Amoresco here who can answer questions in detail about how, how the audit was performed because the contract is pursuant to the actual audit. The savings are guaranteed under the statute so long as we are uh, compliant in how we use the equipment and uh, I recommend the, the vote. 
very good, Mr. Cohen. Uh, Council, you want to ask now? Or do you I want do. To? Okay, Council Dubois. Um, this this um, project, how does it play into Brockton becoming a green community? I, I don't know, is um, Mr. Cassieri on this agenda? Because yes, that might is. be my question for, is for him. We met um, a couple years ago with a gentleman about green communities. And at that time, um, part of the issue that my conversation with Mr. Cassieri was that uh, the city had already undertaken a lot of um, energy efficiency improvements. And how were we going to be able to get the, to the 1 or 2 percent, the percentage improvement in order to be um, considered a green community and get benefit from the state because we designated a green community. And at the time, the concern was we had already done a lot of updates, so we would have to do a heck of a lot in order to be able to um, qualify for green communities, and we couldn't utilize the improvements we had already made in the previous couple years. So I would hate to allocate $2.8 million to improve energy efficiency improve the energy efficiency and then not be able to realize the benefit of becoming a green community because we um, improved our energy efficiency before we applied to be designated a green community. I don't know the answer to that question, Councilor. Maybe uh, Jim Kasiri could answer it. I if don't. anybody can answer it, and if you can't, I think that we should really postpone this here at the City Council so we can make sure that um, the real money and revenue generation that we're going to get from investing $2.8 million in environmental environmental energy improvements can be realized by making Brockton a green community um, and then we'll get more benefit from the state through grants and financial assistance if we can if we can also utilize leverage this 2.8 million dollars not just for the energy savings but also to be designated a green community and get those benefits as well so at any time if any of your presentations can address this um, I would love it if they did, and at the end, I'm hopeful that whoever filed this um, will postpone this until we can get an answer, um, or I would like to postpone it until we can just sit down and make sure that the city can really regain its full financial potential by these energy savings. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Um, is there oh, I, can, I can't answer the question, okay. Councillor. That's, that's fine, Mr. Connor. I don't know if Mr. Cassieri can, or... Maybe they can't. Okay. Manager at all the, in... I think part of that green community uh, initiative would include all city vehicles as well, and I don't know that the possibility would ever exist that we could retrofit every city vehicle. Okay. In any of event, we should look into it, and I'm surprised that, that you know, you're here asking for $2.8 million and no one's even looked into the aspect of um, making Brockton a green community when the investment that we're going to be putting into the city could very well put us over the threshold to get that um, designation. So it, you know, at minimum, it, to me, it shows that this proposal should be vetted a little bit more uh, before we move forward with granting $2.8 million um, if we can't leverage that money. But that's just my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. I, I will say that uh, all of these... Uh, we have 25 buildings, city buildings included in this that are in badly need of right. everything that's on this list. We have boilers, insulation, overhead doors for fire stations. Uh, we have a situation at the police station right now with air handlers and air quality over there. This would, this would resolve all of those issues at the police station. Um, it's a $2.8 million investment by the city. But in 15 years, we would, we would realize 1.675 in savings, million dollars in 15 years. And from then on, the savings would be, every year would even be more than that. So, you know, the well, return... To be clear, I'm not against this. I just, I just think that there's, we've got a couple meetings to hammer it out so we do it right the first time. That's what I have. Well, that, that's her opinion, and she has every right to that, but I mean, we're still here for discussion this evening on this before it yep. goes any further, so continue on. If you, go ahead, Mr. Kassir, if you get some other well, information. Well, um, we have 25 buildings, and we're talking about uh, lighting systems, lighting controls, energy management systems, boiler replacements, chiller replacements. The list goes on and on. There's no way the city will be able to do any of these improvements with, uh, you know, without without this happening. So in my opinion, this is a good deal, and uh, 
I was really looking forward to getting a lot of this stuff done. Thank you, sir. Councillor Barnes, <coughs> you have a question for uh, yes, I did. Superintendent? Yes, I did. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I looked at the information um, that was sent to us, and I, I was wondering kind of how it played out that some of them had a little bit more attention paid to some of the different categories with some of the buildings. So I understand um, a little bit more now, and I read the narrative to the narratives that came with these particular categories. But is there a way, I guess just to piggyback on what uh, Councilor Dubois said, is there a way to maybe incorporate a little bit more for these buildings in this proposal? Or is this kind of the, the threshold or is there more negotiation that can happen? Yeah. Because, uh, for instance, like you mentioned the burner or the boiler replacement. Of these buildings, there are only two on here. And then there were some other ones, there's just like one category uh, that's going to be addressed and some other things. So it was just a little up. Uh, like I think Hal could, could answer that. Is there a way to add more to this, maybe? Sure. Th uh, thank you. I'm uh, Hal Meyer with, with Amoresco, and uh, uh, we've been developing this project with the city and with the school department for quite some years. Um, basically, it has to fit into um, a self-funding parameter. So okay. our task at hand is to go into the city, into the schools, and to try to figure out how much energy equity there is there, how much okay. energy waste, we would like to call it equity, to get reinvested. Um, the, the current um, uh, legislation allows uh, municipalities to enter up into a, up to a 20-year financing. Mm -hmm. uh, the city chose to um, not exceed 15 years mm -hmm. uh, for, for a financing term. So it's kind of like shopping for a house, depending on what size mortgage you get and how much house you can afford. So um, we worked the numbers backwards. There is um, um, an answer to um, Councilor uh, Dubois' um, comment about the uh, a percentage savings and so forth. Uh, the savings, as Jay had mentioned, um, from this phase of the project is uh, about a quarter million dollars. Uh, and the Green Communities requires that uh, the municipality save 20 percent over the following five years. This $250,000 is just the tip, it's not even 5 percent of the overall uh, energy budget uh, for, for the city. If, in fact, the schools get incorporated into the program after the fact as a phase two, perhaps. We've done this in a lot of cities. Um, and um, you may want to know also that uh, the purchasing department is going to be issuing an RFP to uh, convert all the streetlights to LED, which you'll hit the 20 percent, you know, right there. Well, once, so all I'm saying is we shouldn't get too out of, ahead of our skis if we're committing to all this updating and then we won't be able to credit it to us joining the green communities. It seems like you understand this process. Are we able to back credit? So if we were to make this investment of $2.8 million um, and then the school came on and then we did the lights, could we then apply uh, like after the fact for green communities or should we be applying now and showing our plans for how we're going to get to the 20 percent? The latter. Yeah. I, I would suggest applying now. And Amoresco has helped uh, a number of communities uh, do that. Um, using basically we developed an investment grade energy audit a binder like that that usually gets attached to the application oh. and it really it goes it goes a long way in getting it approved no i'm sure if doer saw an application for brockton they would they would they would approve it i'm sorry council sullivan thank you go ahead mr chairman thank you um I, I do have a, a question for you sir in terms of the other communities what are some of the other local municipalities that you've assisted uh, we, we've done about uh, 40 municipalities in the, in the Commonwealth. Um, uh, close by to here, we um, uh, Southeastern uh, Regional Vocational and Technical High School. We did that some years ago. Uh, town of Easton, we're in construction currently. Uh, town of Situate, we're in phase two uh, <coughs> currently on a, on a three-phase uh, program altogether. Uh, Situate, um, as a matter of fact, we're just following green reports with them, um, the annual green reports today. Um, and Easton, we're helping them prepare their, their update uh, to their... Um, uh, we've done, um, we're doing the town of Framingham, we're doing about nine municipalities in the Merrimack Valley, uh, okay. planning commission. What would, what would be like your, a, a competitor, like GE? GE does this, right? Um, I don't believe so. There are some big players in the federal market. Uh, okay. There's a lot of big projects going on and there's big names like GE and Pratt and & Whitney and that kind of thing to do. Our traditional competitors are um, names such as Honeywell, Johns Controls, Siemens Industries. Okay. Uh, we're, uh, we just happen to be, um, we're the largest independent energy services okay. company. So those, those folks are aligned to sort of a larger being and, and products and services. We're, we're independent and we basically put on, on the table um, what's best for, for our clients. Okay. I appreciate it. Mr. Connor, I just had a few questions for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. 
Jay, in terms of um, some of the information you gave us um, <coughs> under the term, so this gentleman just said the term's 15 years as opposed yes. to 20. What was the rationale of the five-year difference? Uh, basically to not obligate the city to additional interest cost. And we could make it work under a 15-year borrowing or, or lease financing. The second would be uh, if we just chose to go with leasing, I'm not certain that a lease term would be available over the 20-year term. For that term? Yeah. In terms of, um, in terms of the letter that we got from uh, Bond Council, Lord Locke, um, it's dated October 13th, and it's by uh, Manley. Uh, on page two of that, it, it says for each order certification from you as a CFO, CFO is required. Uh, if, if you do not <coughs> give the required certification or if unable to make certification without express qualifications and contingencies in loan order, may only be passed by the City Council if the absence of such certification or the qualified or contingent nature of such certification is expressly noted. Right. I, are, you, are you fine with that? Are you going to be able to do that? Yes, because this contract uh, basically is self-financed. The cost of the uh, borrowing or the uh, lease are exceeded by the savings, and so the certification is, atta is attached to the order that went in and is unconditional. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the last question is relative to the, um, to the, to the borrowing versus lease. When will you make that? When, when do you think? I mean, the market's probably going to dictate it, but when, when would a determination made on well, what? Well, at type the moment, the rates, we just did a refinancing, uh, and the rates were so attractive. My thinking is uh, that we'll probably go to market uh, to borrow this funding because the, the rates are so attractive. The other reason for examining a lease contract was that. Um, I wasn't sure whether this would get approved at the same time as other borrowing authorizations so that we could combine them and put the issuance cost over a number of, uh, a number of issues. Uh, and it looks like we'll be able to because we just got the green light uh, letter from bond council to be able to issue the bonds for the school construction projects that we've been waiting on. So this would probably get combined with that. So the issuance cost would be, ex would be spread over a much bigger base than just the $2.8 So we'll probably do borrowed money. But the reason to get the alternative was to be able to go in either direction, depending on what the market said at the time. Okay. And my last question, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Good evening, Council. Good evening, sir. In terms of um, what Mr. Meyer just said about the LED, uh, as you recall, this body filed the resolve almost two years ago when you first took office. <coughs> um, so it's exciting to hear that it's eventually going to come to fruition. Could you just explain, and it's a little off track, Mr. Chairman, but could you just explain um, why it took so long? I know during the campaign you were stressing, but what, why did it take so long on that? Uh, well, the process has been going on for a while. It's actually already implemented. We'll be expecting to come before the council in the very near future seeking an appropriation counselor. Uh, what's going on right now, so you had two separate things. The piece that you had completed before I came in was the actual acquisition. Exactly, acquiring uh, the lights themselves. That in and of its own does provide some advantages, did not generate a huge cost savings. The score is in it giving us the ability to now go forward and swap out the LED lights. Um, I would say this project we've been working on for the past year, Councillor, uh, the first RFP has already been out and granted. That is for the audit and the recommendations on equipment and design. That audit is going on right now. So this is being worked on. This is, in essence, is going to be a series of three RFPs to get the entire project done. The first one being audit, design, and recommendation on equipment. The second one being the purchase of the actual equipment. The third one being uh, awarding a contract for the installation of the equipment. Parts two and three will be coming in front of the council because those will require appropriations. And I, I know you're very familiar with this, but for those who aren't, the LED lights shine about 50% brighter than the traditional bulbs that we have right now. But while they're doing that, they also use only about half of the electricity. So when we get the final numbers in from the audit and we come in front of the council, uh, requesting the appropriation to purchase the new LED lights, uh, it will show that those, those new LED lights will pay for themselves in about three to three and a half years. These LED lights come with a 10-year warranty. That's what's going to be recommended by uh, the consultant. We've actually done uh, quite a bit of work. Uh, Old Colony Planning Council was not doing it, but we actually, and this was, this was in front of the council uh, uh, previously, Councillor, 
we were able to obtain some grant money to help pay for the cost of the audit portion. So that did come before the council previously. The grant, I think, covers about half the cost of the audit. We actually got funded from a state grant. So uh, we are very excited about it. It is well underway. And uh, when the audit and report is complete, uh, they will rec I mean, they're literally determining the exact number of fixtures, where they're all located. Uh, we've also brought the school department in on this with us. Uh, they were very interested to be able to participate um, because there's a lot of lighting outside the schools that can also be converted to the LED lighting and offer the school department all the same benefits that we're looking for on the city side. So uh, it's been well over a year in, into the work that was required to get to this point, but we are now, as soon as that audit report comes in, we get the recommendation of the types of light fixture they're recommending and exactly how many we'll need, uh, then we'll be coming in front of you for approval for the RFP to go out and uh, seek the purchase of the equipment and then subsequently the install. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mayor. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, parts of my uh, question with regards to LEDs that I was going to ask uh, was answered by the Mayor, but I, if you just allow me a little leeway, I, I actually have a, a follow-up question, and I don't know exactly who would answer this question, but what does the uh, City of Brockton pay for street illumination? Does anybody? Yes. I uh, think I'll see if they can come up with a quick number for your council. Obviously, uh, we had a discussion here regarding LED in response to Councilor Sullivan's inquiry, but just to be crystal clear, the LED lights have nothing to do with the MRS no, no, proposal. That's I, under right I understand now, that. So. That's why I asked the chairman for okay. a little leeway because we're talking about savings, and you brought that up in terms of it's going to it's going to be at a cost for the city. But right. it's a lot easier for us to explain it to the constituency that, listen, we are paying $10 for street lighting, and as we swap these, uh, L, you know, these lights into new, the new LEDs, our bills are going to be $5 versus $10. Right. So that's, that's all part of the audit and report that's going on right now that we will be coming in front of the council with in the near future as soon as it's completed. And who would know that in terms of exactly what we pay for? Uh, Jay, do you know who that is? What department actually handles that? Uh, Councilor, it's a separate appropriation in the budget book in the highway department. The highway exact department. exact number I don't remember, but I think it's about a million dollars. A year. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Cruz? Thank you. Uh, Jay, if you can for a minute. Um, originally, this project, and I heard you mention it at the beginning, the schools were part of this. Yes. But they're not now, and obviously they're the bulk of our buildings. Uh, what was the figuring there? Uh, the, the fellow from Amoresco may remember that, but it was a significantly larger project than this project, and they decided to pursue it on their own. Uh, with, as they basically paid for the study as opposed to implementing the study and then pursued it within their own budget. And I think, I don't remember the exact number. Yes, Council. Initially, we developed about a $14 million project citywide, city and schools. Um, and um, now this portion is about $3 million. Um, but the schools roughly, um, um, they were a victim of net school spending. That was really the reason why it, it didn't, didn't pan out. Um, so the state was not going to allow us to consider that as net school spending? That's correct. That's correct. But it's, it's worth 8 to $10 million. So penny wise and pound foolish on the state? <laughs> yes. Is that? <laughs> yeah. Because certainly that's where the energy savings, the bulk of our buildings, our uh, school buildings. Yeah, we're, we're hoping for uh, now with the new administration uh, that okay. there may be some uh, modifications to uh, the Education Reform Act. So to, to allow for net. Meyer, I guess Jay. Hopefully, that's still going to be part of it down the road. Well, a we lot of the it. a lot of the work they've done, the lighting work in the school buildings. I think they've done the the biggest problem there. Just to back up a bit, is that 
Um, under the Education Reform Act, um, money that's spent on capital is considered not net school spending. So for us to have done this, we'd have incurred the capital expense that's in the non-net school budget. The city taxpayers would have incurred that expense. And all of the savings would have gone to the school department's operating budget where the utility costs are, and we'd have got no benefit from it in those calculations. And so we, we applied on uh, several occasions for waivers with the Department of uh, uh, Education. We weren't successful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Azak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a quick question on the LED lights, and it's really quick. I'm not sure who can answer it for me. Maybe uh, Commissioner Rowley? I know you're not on the agenda. Is that okay? Can we ask? Fine. <clears throat> I'm sure he doesn't mind. Mm. It's just, it, and it's honestly really quick. I just want to know, I know you've already started installing some of these LED lights. Can you just give us an idea, a location? I get a lot of complaints about how dim our lights are, and um, I've told my constituents that we're in the process, so they just want to be able to see the difference. Okay. As you can all tell, we've done City Hall. That's all LED lighting. And the, new, the streetscape in downtown, that's all LED lighting. Those are the only two areas only two. right now. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. You're Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Take a motion for favorable recommendation. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, as well. Madam Clerk, item number five. Order that pursuant to the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, the City Council authorizes a revolving fund for fiscal year 2016 for the purpose of funding overtime expenditures in the Fire Department to be paid from reimbursements to the City from third parties for authorized overtime. The Fire Department Reimbursable Overtime Revolving Fund shall receive the receipts of payments from reimbursements for overtime expenditures from various sources such as, I'm sorry, for such purposes as hazardous material, team response and training, 9-11 emergency dispatch training and the training for the Plymouth County Technical Response Team. The expenditures from the fund shall be made on the authority and direction of the fire chief, provided that not more than 50000 may be so expended during fiscal year 2016. The fire chief shall comply with the reporting requirements of the Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53 and a half. Honorable, invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, and Michael Williams, Fire Chief. Okay, Councilors, every year at the start of the budget season, we bring a bunch of revolving fund requests to the city. This one slipped through the cracks with the change of uh, administrations in the fire department between Chief Francis and Chief Williams. My office didn't pick up that we didn't get the request to authorize it, uh, so we're asking you to authorize it now before we set the tax rate. There's a small amount of money that's in that revolving fund that if we don't authorize it, we'd have to close out to free cash as opposed to staying where it belongs. Make a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Council. Motion's been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Conner. Chairman. Councilor uh, Sullivan. Before we get to agenda item number six, since uh, I'd like to make a motion to take number 11 out of order since Second. it is applicable to six. Motion's been made and seconded to take item number 11 out of order. All in favor of that? Opposed? Madam Clerk, we're going to go to item number 11 if you could read that first. Resolved that this. City Council hereby requests that a representative and or representatives of Query appear before the Finance Committee to address questions pertaining to the desalinization water contract. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conant, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner, Alfredo Andres, General Manager of Aquaria <coughs> Water, Peter Fairbanks, President of Aquaria, and Andrew Cohen, Attorney for Wilmar, Cutler, Pickler, and Hal, and Door, LLP. Uh, councilors, as you can recall, we've had a lot of discussion on this particular item, especially during our last uh, few meetings, and we also received a, a lot of information from a query that we had requested. And if you can also recall, I also uh, set up a subcommittee a few weeks back asking some members of the council to sit and go through some of the information. I appointed uh, Councilor Robert Sullivan as chair, Councilor Michelle Dubois, Councilor Moises Rodriguez, Councilor Tim Cruz, and also with our legal counsel, Attorney Gilday, and ask that they would uh, meet and go through the information, and I believe that uh, they did meet, so I'm going to uh, turn to our chairman, uh, the chair of that committee, and uh, present to us their findings, Councillor Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, colleagues, uh, myself, uh, Councillor at-large Rodriguez, and Councillor uh, Dubois, 
did meet last Thursday. Councilor Cruz was unable to attend. <clears throat> However, we've had, he and I had subsequent conversations relative to a summary of that meeting. We were joined uh, by legal counsel. It was a duly uh, noticed uh, last Thursday night here at City Hall. I do want to first of all thank you two gentlemen. The summary that you provided us was excellent. It really was. It was very helpful. It was a good tool. Um, I, I also want to thank you for getting us all the, uh, all the documentations we requested in individual. There was a lot of work on your behalf. I thank you for that. I do want to uh, report back, colleagues, that, again, I filed this resolve four years ago, um, and then subsequently, again, this legislative session. The intent of that resolve was to find out from Aquaria, our business partner, um, their efforts in terms of, of marketing. Um, and I do want to report back favorably that, that the summary that they gave us uh, is very, very clear that they did make efforts um, to different neighboring municipalities, uh, to also some private entities as well. Um, if you looked at uh, the third binder, the third, third binder that was stated, it was very, very um, chock full, quite honestly, with, with correspondence and letters um, that do show that Aquaria <coughs> did, did do some uh, due diligence and some efforts. Um, I, I myself, and I've been on the council 10 years, I, I wasn't aware that a, an LOI, a letter of, of, int of interest, had been signed uh, by Brockton Power and, and Aquaria. That was news to me, but again, that was very helpful in terms of vetting out the process, and I will let my colleagues speak, Mr. Chair, but I do, again, I want to thank you. I think, in my humble opinion, the intent of the resolve has been met. I wish we have given this four years ago. Uh, I think uh, a lot of time and effort probably uh, wouldn't have been had because of that, but I do want to thank you for that. I do want to, uh, if I could, Mr. Chairman, throw it to both uh, Council Dubois and Rodriguez to, to opine on their uh, opinions as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dubois, do you wish um, to? Mr. Chairman, I think that uh, Councillor Sullivan summed up everything that I had to say. Thank okay, you. Okay, very good. Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, too, have to uh, second uh, the uh, council at large for uh, making his presentation. I, I however, um, had a little bit of an issue with the uh, the date in in terms of the um, the advertisement that was done. Yes, according to the uh, the summary that you gave us, it, it clearly shows that you did quite a bit of um, of advertising. But if at least based on the information that we got, uh, this some of this stuff is over five years old. And my question to you folks is, why have you not done um, additional advertising to try <coughs> to advertise the plant to other communities, other entities, um, as you had done previously in the beginning of the, uh, of the contract? But it seems like you haven't done uh, much lately. And my question to you is, why have you, haven't you done that to, um, to help um, lessen the burden of this contract to the citizens of this city uh, and the city of Brockton. Okay, well, uh, councillors, good evening. Um, well, the reason is that the advertising was done mostly when the plant was uh, during the design and uh, construction. Once the plant was up and running, it advertised by, by itself. Everyone already in the market, in the market business, Everyone in the market business knew about the plan, and, uh, and we have still been involved in the water uh, conference, water summits, and uh, on the water business. So the fact that we have not been advertising maybe for, uh, for uh, general public, we have been focusing more on, on, on water events and things like that. But in the, uh, in the surrounding communities that border the city of Brockton, or at least the, uh, are within reach of your plant, uh, have you done anything lately in terms of advertising to those same communities? Because things change all the time. Uh, five, six, seven years ago, uh, you could have had a particular issue in a community that wouldn't allow them to do certain things, but things have changed. Uh, there's been some water bans in some communities or some uh, a little lesser uh, of, of a burden in other communities that probably couldn't afford the hookup back then, but now might be able to afford it. So why aren't you doing that? Well, we keep a very close relation to all the communities that, uh, that we can actually, from an engineering point, deliver water. And we meet with them uh, regularly when we have issues because we are constantly flushing the pipe 
and we have to coordinate with uh, water departments in all the uh, communities uh, along the pipeline. So we have a, a close relation. We know what's happening with, uh, with those communities and, uh, and we have been working directly with them, not, not through, through advertising. But as I mentioned, are, are you, like, can you possibly from today forward to make an effort in the sense yes. of, of I, advertising I, I, to I some of the I certainly appreciate your, your comment and we'll, lo we'll look into it because that's, that's one way uh, it's a good idea to, to get some, uh, some knowledge of the plant, not only in the water circle, but also on, on, you know, on, the, on the public opinion. Yeah, you, you've got a list of a bunch of communities that yeah. you actually had approached. So I think if you just went back and touched bases, I mean, that's what most people do in business. Is, I mean, uh, anybody that's involved in, in sales knows that sometimes when you make the initial contact, there might be no interest in the, uh, in the product that you're selling, but subsequently you might be able to get uh, additional uh, takes and things like that. So that's what I would say that I think it's important for you to do that and just to kind of help, you know, us uh, lessen the load in the, uh, in the city here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor Cruz, I know that uh, even though you weren't actually, there. Councillor Sullivan summed it up pretty well. It's, uh, the, the information is pretty, pretty detailed. I agree with uh, Councillor Rodriguez that it would be good to keep just continue to those efforts, but I'm satisfied that the contract has been has been fulfilled, and I want to thank Council Sullivan for his leadership on this. And my only comment would be, boy, this could have been a lot easier. Yeah. So, thank you. And thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Chairman, I'm going to make a favorable recommendation of agenda item number 11 back to the full council. Second. second. Motion been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Gentlemen, I, I too, as council president, want to thank you um, and on behalf of the uh, other councils that are not present here this evening as well. Um, it did take a long time for us to get to this, uh, this journey, but, um, and I agree with some of the comments my other councils have made, uh, for you to keep up and keep doing what you're supposed to be doing based upon how the contract uh, was written. And I uh, do appreciate the efforts of my colleagues and Council Sullivan, who I appointed as chair, his efforts and the other members that uh, came together to, to me to look through that information, which was um, given to us in, in, in much, much detail. Um, I do have the book at home in my kitchen table and uh, started going through it. And I don't know, I, I, I got coffee log too at the same time while I was looking at it. But in any case, appreciate all, all that we did. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, we'll go back to six. I think we go back to item number six. Order appropriation of six million three hundred and ninety five thousand six hundred and thirty one dollars from the fiscal year two thousand and sixteen unappropriated estimated receipts to the Water Enterprise Fund to the DPW Water Enterprise Desal fixed charge six million three hundred and ninety five thousand six hundred and thirty one. This appropriation will allow the Water Department to pay the fiscal year two thousand and sixteen. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conner, Chief Financial Officer, Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner. Councils, as you know, this item has been before us as well, and this was all part of um, uh, the budget and that we had uh, taken out of the budget uh, until we got to this level to hearing the report that we wanted to hear from Aquaria. So um, I think that being said, Mr. Conner, if you want to just bring us up to speed. And what well, we, uh, we need, if we're going to take action on this through an appropriation, we need to do it before we set the tax rate. I think the council at this point, despite the lengthy time it took to get the answers you were seeking, is now satisfied with that issue. I just, I've had previous conversations with the gentleman from Aquaria. I just asked him again. I don't believe we're going to get charged the interest if we get this appropriation through, so we'll save that amount of money and maybe get back on track with uh, hoping to continue to have a relationship with the, uh, the water plant down there, which over time will benefit us because it's going to take additional sales for that to help. So I'd Make ask the appropriation. Favor, recommendation. Second. Motion. On the motion, if I could, I, I do want to uh, publicly thank Aquaria. As you recall, Councillors, uh, we were given written notice. They did put us on notice last time, and I did ask the gentleman if he would hold off from that action. And now Mr. Conan has uh, given us a, a, a notion that they won't charge us interest. So I do want to thank that uh, to you, both of you gentlemen, for, for doing the right thing. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Thank you, council. Thank you, Mr. Cardin. Item number seven, seven, Madam Clerk. Order appropriation of 500,000 from the unappropriated estimated receipts of unappropriated estimated receipts of the Water Enterprise Fund rate increase 
to the Water Enterprise Fund. Yes. Personal services overtime, 200,000. Ordinary maintenance goods supplies, 100,000. EPA mandate, 50,000. Expense reimbursement to the general fund, 150,000. In order to restore certain cuts made to the Water Enterprise budget paid for by the anticipated extra revenue. Invited on role, Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Well, Council, uh, Mr. Condon. Well, uh, Councilors, this particular item has nothing to do with Aquaria. It has to do with the water rates that was pa were passed uh, recently. Uh, the budget cuts that were referred to in the order were not cuts made by the Council. They were cuts made by the Mayor in his submission because the water revenues weren't adequate to support the spending requested by the Department. The most important ones were in overtime, uh, goods and supplies, which basically in this case is pipes uh, and fittings, and a, and a category called EPA mandates. We have to pay for registration at Sorbo Lake and some other costs that are mandated on us, and that number was underfunded. So those first three items are underfunded. That fully restores it. And the balance, I think we think the revenues from the water rate increase on a half-year basis are worth about uh, $600,000. To be conservative, we're spending 500000 of that, just to make sure we don't overstate it. And what was left out of the 500000 we've asked to be re reapplied to the expense reimbursement to the general fund with the water department owes the general fund about a million six, and this reduces that obligation somewhat. Councilors? Motion to recommend favorable. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes Councilors. back to the full city council. Thank you, Mr. Condon. <laughs> Madam Clerk, <coughs> item number eight. Order that according to the requirements of the Massachusetts Department of Revenue Bulletin 2015-07B, request in the City Council authorize the amortization of the fiscal year 2015 snow and ice removal deficit of $2,459,730.62, not more than three equal installments beginning in fiscal year 2016. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, Chief Financial Officer, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Mr. Okay, this is to raise a bad memory of the winter that has passed, and uh, most of the snow costs that we incurred ended up being deficit because we blew, we blew through our budget. The state uh, did not provide additional funding for cities and towns, but they did provide a mechanism where you didn't have to pick up that deficit in one year. Uh, we have to get the city council's approval to do it. The legislation allows us to pay the deficit back over three years if you vote yes. If you don't approve this, then basically this year's budget has to uh, eat up that whole $2.5 million deficit. So I'd ask uh, for you to make a vote if you're looking to uh, save uh, the tax levy, which is not now fully appropriated. You need to approve this. If you don't, Thank you. We'll motion for favorable recommendation. Second. 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 On the motion, Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Um, so this would be in three... <clears throat> Yearly installments, we'd amortize yes. this. Yes. Um, you think it's a decent way to go? What if we get whacked again this winter? Well, personally, you know, uh, th your decision is pretty simple. If you, s I think we have unappropriated tax levies. I don't think anybody would be surprised where where I come down on this. I think we'd be better off taking care of it and getting it behind us. If you do that, though, you're going to be d dipping into the unappropriated tax levy from the two and a half growth that we've not used. So that's. That's your stark choice. It's a, not an easy one. But if you get it behind you, it's behind you. I have no idea what the snow and ice costs will be this coming winter. It could be a milder winter, and the appropriation of 2.2 or $3 million will be adequate. Or it could be another year where we have 3 or $4 million and have a deficit, and then we'll still have a hangover deficit from the year that just passed. So it's uh, from a fiscal conservative's perspective, your uh, gimlet-eyed CFO, I say pay it off now. But uh, I understand for folks who are sitting in your chairs, it may not be the decision you want to make because it means a tax increase. And is there no chance that the uh, even a supplemental budget will give us any money out of the state for this? Uh, is, it, is that out of the... That? I don't think so. The reason is the state's well aware that state law allows communities to have an underfunded snow and ice removal budget. And I think they feel, well, if you really wanted to more careful, you'd have a higher budget, and when you had a bad year, you'd be able to take care of it. So it, it's, uh, they don't want to encourage our low budgeting a, a cost, which we know for most years we're going to incur. So I don't think so. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Councilor Dubois. Thank you. Mr. Condon, if we were to go with your theory, say, you know, paying it off, wouldn't, wouldn't that have to come from the mayor? I mean, it isn't like right now we could change this order to be getting this $2.4 million from unappropriated tax receipts instead of amateurizing it over three payments. We, well, we couldn't make that switch o change o right now in this 
document? No, no. I, th I think um, the state legislation says that the, op the opportunity exists for the municipality to take it over time or to pay it off at once. Right. And so the decision to make that, if the, dis if the mayor were inclined to simply appropriate the money, we wouldn't be in front of you. He isn't. He's recommended this instead. He would well, rather. Well, even if he wanted to appropriate the money, he'd have to come before us to appropriate that unlevied no. tax. No, I thought he would have to come before no, us. No, for not for a snow and ice deficit. We just would add it to the tax rate. Not for the snow and ice deficit. Okay, so ultimately, this um, it has to be approved. But this route has to be approved by the city council. But either way, whichever route we go down is really based on the mayor's judgment. Us as a body can't say we're going to file a resolve saying that we want you to pay for the snow and ice removal via a tax increase. That isn't something that our body can do. Or are you saying that we could do that if we want I'm, to? I'm saying that if you take no action, the state law says we have to pick it up in one year, which means it will be coming out of the unappropriated tax levy, which would be a tax increase. You have an opportunity because of this special legislation, it takes the mayor's recommendation and the city council's approval to take advantage of it. So it's really your decision. The mayor's decision has been made, I so think. So if we take no action on this or if we kill it, then um, the payment automatically rolls onto the tax levy. That's correct. That's, what you're That's correct. Um, and how much more of an increase in the average homeowner's bill would that be? Um, let's see, it's about a million seven that would have to be additionally paid for. And um, it's probably one and three quarters percent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? I lost track. Was the motion made in second? Okay. okay. Yeah. On the motion to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item number nine, Madam Clerk. Order that the DPW Commissioner is authorized to issue one industrial sewer connection at 353 Highwood Street, parcel ID 182-043, plot 40-1, for the property <coughs> owned by John Lyons, Air Distribution Company, invited Lawrence Riley, DPW Commissioner John Lyons, property owner. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Dubois. Um, Mr. Rowley, thank you for being here. Um, do you see any problem with issuing an industrial sewer connection on Howard Street? No, I do not. They, they lost their septic, which is the reason they well, want to come actually up Well, Well, actually, I did talk to him tonight, and the septic did pass the Title V. Great. And there is a partial in on his property now, so we won't have to go out to Howard Street. So he wants to do this in the spring. Great. If it's approved. Great. At this time, I'm going to motion to recommend favorably. Second. Great. Thank you. Motion been made and second to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Good <coughs> Commissioner, as well. Item number nine, uh, 10. Order that the city council authorizes the mayor to enter into the intermunicipal agreement between the city of Brockton, town of West Bridgewater, and the new family dollar store. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, Philip Nazarella, city solicitor, Lawrence Rowley, DPW commissioner, and David Gagney, town administrator. And councilors, uh, I also have a note here from uh, Mr. Gagney. He, he was unable to attend the meeting here this evening, so the mayor is uh, present as well as the, uh, the others representing the, uh, the contract. So, Mr. Mayor? In terms of the uh, specifics regarding the agreement itself, uh, I'll def defer to Attorney Federoff, but uh, just to give you the overview on this, right on the West Bridgewater Brockton line, there used to be a McDonald's. The McDonald's was connected to the uh, Brockton sewer system. Uh, the McDonald's was demolished, removed, and at that location now a new family dollar store is, uh, has been built. Uh, the uh, West Bridgewater requested of us, Family Dollar through West Bridgewater, if we would reconnect the Family Dollar in the same manner that uh, we had connected to McDonald's. In terms of this one individual connection, it's a pretty small decision. Uh, the Family Dollar is going to have like one bathroom and one sink. It uses a fraction, a fraction of the water and sewer that the former McDonald's did. Uh, but I. I it's important because uh, through the Old Colony Planning Council and now through our efforts with the Community Compact, uh, we've agreed with West Bridgewater that we would work together to redevelop economically that stretch of South Main Street, Kmart Plaza into West Bridgewater. There's no question that that's a, a very depressed business area right now. 
And I kind of relate it to people, if you're familiar with Weymouth Landing, we've got Weymouth and Braintree that kind of share a commercial district and they work very well together in aligning their ordinances and sharing resources. So I, I think part of the solution to rejuvenating that Kmart, South Main Street piece that goes into West Bridgewater is really for us in West Bridgewater to have a cooperative attitude and in, in, in this agreement the spirit of it is that that we'll work together to develop, uh, do economic development on both sides of, of the city town line down there. So I think in terms of the very small amount of water and sewer that one family dollar store is going to use is not a big deal, but I do think this is significant because we are doing this into municipal agreement with um, with the town to allow this business that's in that district that we're looking to revitalize to connect. And I don't think there's any questions right on the Brockton line. That store reopening is a positive step for the commercial property on the Brockton side uh, of that line also. So. Uh, in, in terms of, I, I think this is, uh, makes a lot of sense uh, for the city, and I hope you'll act favorably upon it. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Just a quick question, I think probably for Larry, or might be for uh, Attorney Federoff. Uh, other agreements, and I didn't get a chance to read this. We actually contract with the town of West Bridgewater collects and pays us, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I just want to make sure I know we've done that in other municipal agreements. Yes. So, uh, that's all I wanted to make sure that that was in there. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to read it, so thank you. Thank, thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Raleigh, is this uh, is needed for the other businesses down there, the car wash, the Hardee's? No, this is just for the family dollar store. Okay, okay. they, they they're just not thought of because they are connected into our lines also. Yes, they are. Okay. Yes. So there's no need to... Yeah, I don't believe it's Hardee's. I, think I just want to make sure we're covering all bases, that's all. In Brockton. So I think it is. So the existing users that, that because we, we were approached because there was a change in ownership and a change in use, so consequently that brought us into the fold. Um, but some of the existing users, because they're so old, don't have similar agreements where we're charging West Bridgewater, for example. That's why this is such a huge benefit for us, because we don't have leaning power like we do with our own okay. residents. Um, but as a matter of sheer fact, I spoke with um, the town council for West Bridgewater, who um, recognize that that's a problem with the city and recognizes the benefit that we provide to their residents. So we're working on trying to bring everyone into the fold with similar types of agreements, but it's going to take some time. In addition, we're working to deal with the infrastructure that's not necessarily on private property, but in the road of West Bridgewater um, so that we get some compensation for taking care of that infrastructure as well. So it's the first step of a, of a long process. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other uh, councilors? Motion to recommend favor. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full City Council. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, we go to item number 12. Resolved that the Brockton City Council calls upon our elected officials in the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House of Representatives to oppose the TPP in <laughs> any similar trade deals if they fail to restructure the the misguided and failed policies of the past invited Jim Pinkham, President Plymouth Bristol Cent Central Labor Council, Mark Flaherty, Secretary Treasurer Plymouth Bristol Central Labor Council, and Dan Justice, Plymouth County Central Labor Council. Council Chairman, uh, Councilors, I want to uh, just give you a quick synopsis. I filed this resolve. For those that don't know what the TPP is, it's a trade agreement, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It was reached uh, on October 5th after about seven years of negotiations. Uh, some people might ask why would a local elected official uh, file a resolve dealing with a federal issue. Uh, however, uh, I think that we need to because it has serious impacts uh, nationwide, um, uh, 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 statewide, commonwealth-wide, and of course here in the city. And I will tell you that the resolve I filed was very, very lengthy, and I will s surmise it very quickly. Um, this, this trade agreement will definitely have an impact. Jobs have been lost due to uh, um, trade. Uh, it's going to devastate families and entire communities. Of course, uh, there's been uh, deficits in job displacements, hundreds of thousands of jobs uh, due to the, uh, the growing trade deficit. Working families are really, really uh, bearing the brunt of this policy. 
Now, you have to bear in mind, if you're not familiar with the TPP, um, there are some issues that are going on um, that need to be addressed, and that's really one of the reasons why I filed the resolve. I think we need to have um, voice of the workers. Um, Mr. Pinker, Mr. Flair, and Mr. Justice were uh, nice enough to, uh, to come here tonight, and they waited patiently, and they're going to give us some great uh, education and information. Um, the issue is really uh, there was some secrecy in this negotiation. There's a lot of controversials in the draft documents, and really the uh, agreement is very, very expansive in scope. So at the end of the day, um, we need to make sure that the voices of the workers, small businesses, families, and communities are heard, their interests are addressed. Um, the offshoring of manufacturing and service jobs, quite honestly, what it does, it's going to deprive local and state governments of, of sorely needed revenue, especially during tough economic times. It's really jeopardizing the livelihoods of millions and millions of public servants, as well as construction workers. Uh, and, the, and these are people that really depend uh, on infrastructure, um, building, repair, and maintenance. So I do, want to, uh, I do want to open it up to these gentlemen that were kind enough to come here. Again, um, at the end of the day, the TPP was done. Um, and it was done in, in a secret manner, and really states and localities, and us as local elected officials and citizens, we don't really have any opportunity to correct it, other than uh, as elected um, local officials working with our state officials, and my colleague who has a dual role, State Representative Michelle Dubois, City Councilor, signed on, co-signed this resolve. Um, but we can, as elected officials, and we've done this in the past, and I've been on it 10 years, we can ask our federal officials, uh, our congressmen and our, and our senators, to listen to us because at the end of the day it's the working um, people that put us into office that we represent and we're their voice. So with that being said, Mr. Pinkham, I want to thank you and uh, I, I look forward to hearing what you need to say tonight, sir. Well, thank you very much. I think you just said it all. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to thank you for uh, letting us come and speak on this. Um, my name is Jim Pinkham. I'm president of the Plymouth Bristol Center Labor Council. I represent 45,000 workers. 4,000 of them are in Brockton. Since NAFTA in 1993, when that was established, we've lost over 5 million jobs. Sorry, the lighting's not great. Didn't they say they had uh, new lighting in here? <laughs> Outside. Uh, you know, when NAFTA was um, uh, established, it was uh, corporate driven. Um, it, it, all the rules were set by the corporations. There's an economic uh, downturn and a hardship that has happened in all of our community since then. In 1993, uh, 1993 there was about a $7 billion deficit. Uh, with NAFTA in place, we're now at a $508 billion deficit. And now Washington wants to try to do it with the TPP. This was done with no representation from workers. It only had corporate input, and it was all done behind closed doors. They come up with almost 6,000 pages of documents. It will be an up and down vote in Congress. There will be no changes to it. So we feel it's not good for the American workers. It undermines the minimum wage, uh, the clean, build, uh, clean water rules, will be rolled back um, and it will outsource more jobs. By passing this resolution, we send a message to Washington that we're not on board sending and outsourcing our jobs. So we're hoping that you'll adopt this resolution and send the message back to Washington. Thank you. Thank we you have a, Dan Justice is um, uh, the AFL-CIO representative um, on this. So if you have any questions, uh, I'd love to, uh, to turn it around. Great. I don't want to uh, duplicate some of the comments that Jim made, but a uh, point I'd like to make, uh, I appreciate you, Counselor, for bringing this up. Uh, if you've heard of the ISDS, which is the Investor State Dispute Settlement, which is a, it's, it's a dispute settlement within the TPP where companies can go, it's sort of like a private corporate court, sort of undermines local democracies like your city council here and state governments where um, if, if they can prove that there's a loss in profit due to an ordinance that you passed here, say raising the local minimum wage, they can actually, and they have successfully sued through the ISDS, local governments, state governments, 
to undermine it. It literally undermines local democracy. It's something that you should look into. I have some information to share with you I'd like to look into a little bit further. But I don't want to take too much more time. Jim, I think, covered it. But um, I appreciate you bringing it up. And many city councils across the state and across the country are doing the same thing that you're doing here tonight. So thank you for your time. Thank appreciate you for it. coming here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, councilors, I do, I do think it was extremely important to bring this to the forefront. Uh, I have spoken to some of my colleagues and our colleagues in Boston City Council. Um, at the end of the day, America was really um, built with, with, with the workers. You know, we, if you looked at the agenda earlier tonight, we uh, favorably recommended some, some collective bargaining, some union contracts. This body has always gone to bat for the unions, and, and I think uh, if we can do a, a, a small bit in this fight to uh, potentially uh, show that the city of Champions, the city of Brockton, uh, supports uh, the men and women uh, that, that really uh, build our country, I think we need to do that. So with that being said, unless there's any questions for these gentlemen, I do want to thank them again tonight. I want to make a favorable recommendation of this uh, back to the full city council. On the motion. Second. Motion been made and second on the motion, Council. Yes, I just, also, I just, uh, I'm familiar with Jim, and uh, so I'm a member of the Utility Workers uh, Union of America, AFL-CAO, Local 273, and our unions will be uh, getting in touch with our state and, uh, representatives on this, the Senate. I think uh, you at home ought to also uh, get in touch with uh, Congress and have them vote against this. It's a very important thing. It's not just for unions. It's for everybody's job, non-union alike. So it's just something really important that we have to uh, get them to the feet. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, councilors. Motion has been made and seconded to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? It goes back to the full city council. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you, Councilor Sullivan, for bringing it forth. Councilors, um, next Monday night, city council, November 23rd, 8 o'clock p.m., right here in the, uh, the council chambers. Just to mention a couple of, um, a couple of things uh, before any of you may have something, I do want to just... Uh, Point, uh, point out to you uh, when you leave and you notice uh, to my right our family portrait has been posted up, <laughs> up on the wall so okay. it's, it's there I finally like counselors one. and uh, I also want to make mention I was unable to attend the uh, Trinity um, open house on Thursday because of uh, work commitment but um, if you have a chance and opportunity to go by you'll see the Korean War Memorial was back in place uh, they did a wonderful job and as you know we raised questions about that uh, some months ago for the condition it was in, but uh, I even was um, out just tooting around Saturday night on Main Street just to try to see different things that have been going on, and I happened to even stop there, and it's well lit. Um, it's, it's very, very, it's sharp looking, and it's a great tribute to our Korean War uh, mm -hmm. uh, veterans that um, served so many years ago. So if you ever have a chance, go by, and I think with the new lighting that we have right here around City Hall, and even even uh, going up Main Street and even up by uh, the Farm Enterprise building, um, you know, it doesn't hurt sometimes if they see some of us out taking a look around, even at night time, um, to know that we're, we're interested in what's going on in the city. But it's a, it was a great, uh, a great look. So I just want to make those couple of mentions. And as well, we all know last Wednesday was Veterans Day, and unfortunately the parade got canceled because of the inclement weather, but we did have a nice service. Uh, at the Wall Memorial Building, which was um, well attended by our, our veterans, and uh, it was it was a great day for for the veterans. I don't think we do enough for for the veterans. In my own personal opinion, I think everything should be closed for Veterans Day, and we're, something's wrong with this country in that regard. But in any case, anyone else have any Council Cruz? And thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. No, more. I just want to take a minute to uh, congratulate the Brockton High Boys Soccer Team, which this past Saturday night won the uh, South Regional. Uh, soccer championship and tomorrow night I want to invite everybody up to Brockton High at 7.30. Brockton High boys soccer team plays for the Eastern Mass Championship and it's oh. been a right. big crowd coming. I want to particularly congratulate one of the co-captains, Joe Cruz, but uh, <laughs> he's no just relation, one of the co-captains. But, but uh, they play tomorrow night for the Eastern Mass Championship and knock on wood if that goes well we'll play sadly for the state championship so come on up at 7:30. it's great. been fun and it's a great group of boys and coach rick robbins and the boys want to congratulate you congratulations Thank to you. them uh, yes council studensky if i might mr president i can yes personal you may. for everybody in the chambers and for all of my brothers and sisters i send out a thank you for myself and my family last monday night we dedicated and named a building within the city hall parameters uh, for Mayor Paul B. Stadensky, and he, uh, he's down around there all the time, believe me. <laughs> I know he's happy, the family's happy, I received calls from people, uh, even people out of state who, who knew him and, and thought it was great, and I have to thank the Council President, Council Approves, and all of the Councilors. 
Uh, and uh, it's just, it's wonderful. And with his uh, saying, I think he wrote for that movie, I now will uh, remind you all that brevity is clear and great eloquence. So I'll sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. And as I said that evening, it was a great honor and a great tribute to, to do that for him and, and, to, and to be uh, really a part of it, too. So he's, uh, he's with us each and every day, and I know he's watching us right now, no doubt about he's it, looking especially for you. I he's looking for Brophy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, counselors, anything else to be, uh, nothing else to come before this council this evening? This meeting is adjourned. All right. <laughs>